G'day! Hello, hello! Why am I so nervous? Um... Yeah, first stream, first stream on Twitch. G'day! I'm Melody C. Turtle, nice to meet you. For anyone watching the VOD. Hi! I know I shouldn't be so nervous, but I am for some reason. I'm just sort of testing things out right now, because, uh... Oh, there's stream elements. Cool. Stream elements is working. <laughs> nice. Uh, so basically this is just me testing out whether things are properly working or not. Um, and then once that's done, I'm gonna pr do some proofreading for my novel. Uh, like I have been doing for a few of my gorilla streams. Uh, yeah, so... And I've got... Oh, does the chat box ignore the stream element spot? Yeah, yeah, chat rolls, cool. Oh wait, um, does it let me send it from here? Cool, it lets me send it from here. I don't have to type it in on my my phone. Hey. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. I'm messing around. I, I have it up on my phone so I can, you know, watch chat while I'm streaming and stuff, even when I've got things full screen. Because uh, for those who aren't familiar with me, I only have one monitor. I'm working from a laptop. Anyway, so I I should have commands set up. I oh, mean, that is like real quick. But then it takes a while for it to show up. Okay, cool. So it is, it's a bit small. Can I update this uh, midstream? I should have checked what what I set the font size to on on YouTube and just mimicked that. I probably can. I just click reload overlays. Yeah, for some reason the chat isn't updating on my phone, which is uh, awkward. Awkward. Uh, let me switch over to that. Uh, I also have a lot set up. Um, they're nothing particularly fancy, but they work. Um, let me just give, give me a second. Uh, this one. It's like, apologies to Fiori, I'm going to use her in, as, as an example. Ta da! Bidding! <laughs> uh, maybe I should move that across a little since it seems like it's sitting right right at the at the edge so it doesn't there we go still looks a bit awkward because the exclamation marks on a separate line but uh oh well <laughs> oh well uh then yeah chat box edit that so i can see what font size i'm using over on uh youtube text settings Font Verdana, font size 20. Okie doke. Let me try setting that on my Twitch overlay as well. See, I couldn't test this out because uh, over on um, YouTube, my, my first proper... My first proper stream before I had my overlays... Uh, my, the, I, I, I had the... I'm, I'm failing my words right now. Um, I had the waiting room for my debut open and someone had, like, some crab guy or something commented, like, crab or something in the chat. And so because of that, I could actually see the chat when I was setting up the overlay and I could see how it looks. I did not have that uh, when I was setting up my Twitch overlays. Uh, chat box. Chat box. I'm not really expecting anyone to show up just because, like, uh, this is kind of an awkward time 
for folks outside Australia. Uh, enable custom font size 20. Save. And now if I, hey, where'd it go? Oh, do I still have it set so that it disappears after a bit? I don't want that. Chama, it should be, eh? It should be showing the messages permanently. Hold on. Right, let me test it with another one of these. See whether that also works. Yeah, YouTube command works. And this shows up here, and it's... I think that's the size I have on my YouTube chat. Now, why did it go away before? Was that because I saved the thing? Oh, and so it doesn't... Okay, yeah. So it probably... Since Twitch is just like a continuous here's the chat, that's what you're doing with, instead of like a specific a specific waiting room like YouTube, it's probably like, oh, I, I reloaded it, so now the, the old stuff isn't there anymore. Now let me just check that that's the case. Yeah. Let me just check that the size did actually update properly. If I suddenly set it to like 50 or something. And then test another one of my commands. Twitter. Okay, yeah, so it is correctly updating, so presumably 20 is the correct one, since that's what I got from my other one. Save. There we go. My chat box should now be working properly. Unfortunately, I can't test my other my other notifications. I can tell I can use the stream elements as thing to test them, but oh well. Uh, what other commands did I have? I believe I had a Wattpad one for my writing. I don't know why. Why the chat isn't updating on my phone? Hello phone, can you see this message? I, I don't... Let me send a message here and see if that... Oh no, I can see it, I can see it. It was just being weird before. Okay, nice. Nice, so I can monitor the chat on my phone, that's good. I can play full screen games. And then, uh, what else do I need to tell? All right, my last command, which I hope I won't need to use, but just in case someone comes in here and assumes stuff based on how my voice sounds, I have this. Hold on, let, let me remove the let me go back to a uh, stream elements. I want to remove it so that it actually shows up on screen. I, I get why it would be default. It would default to uh, ignoring that particular message, but like I, I I use my commands to actually get to get stream elements to say things in chat. <laughs> And I feel like it makes sense for them to show up on the chat box. Uh, remove that. Save. There we go. So now we reload this. And if I now do it... Ta-da! I can now tell folks what my pronouns are. Oh, my... I think because... I have no idea why... Why my phone's being so buggy with the chat. 
I think like I, I accidentally like clicked something and it opens whatever and then it just stopped updating. So basically, I can't touch my phone once it starts. Hello phone. <laughs> Can you see this message? Is it there? You gonna show up? Is the delay really that freaking bad? Hot damn. It's still... Okay, no, it's just... I was hoping to use my phone to monitor the chat, but... It seems like it just doesn't want to show up. Oh, there it is. Why is it- why is it so weird? Then I- I send test, it shows up here. Then if I... How the hell does that work? It's, it's a, the app is being dumb. The app is being dumb. I can see my messages when I- when I like tap the... ...screen. But like... If I just leave it, then the messages don't show up. And I don't get why that is. So maybe I just need to... Huh. What if I send a test message from the phone? It immediately shows up on my end, but it doesn't actually update. Is the- is the app just freaking balked? So I do this, it doesn't show up. I tap my phone, it shows up. I tap the screen. Why- <laughs> I might have to ask how other people do this. Cause like, I- I actually haven't- I haven't even opened Peggle. I should probably- I should probably set that up for before tomorrow. Uh... Hmm. So... So yeah, I, I need to set up Peggle, see if I can play it, like, windowed, so I can monitor my chat, like, behind it. Because if my phone's gonna be like this, I don't really know how I'm gonna handle this, because, like... Hold on, let me see if there's anything online about this. Uh, Twitch mobile chat phrasing and VODs phrasing chat phrasing Does an update maybe? Let me close the app and reopen it, see if that helps. Or maybe there's like a separate... A separate app I'm supposed to use... For this sort of thing. Oh, Stream Manager. Does this... Okay, this... I guess this is how we do it. Not how I'm used to, I can't see, like, the actual, the stream itself from here, but I guess it works. <laughs> and have I even... What else do I have to test? Because I've already tested my overlays, I've tested the chat. Uh, I'm 
gonna reload this just to get all those test messages off the screen. Uh, I guess what we can do is just go off to the proofreading section since I'm I now know how setting up all of this works and I've tested my overlays so uh, I guess let's let's get to the proofreading. Uh, fair warning, fair warning for anyone who who actually cares about my novel <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, I I'm currently proofreading the final day of the the current chapter that I'm working on, which means folks are about to die very soon, and it's kind of gonna spoil stuff. So uh. If you want to read it up yourself and, you know, you, you don't want to be spoiled, then I guess click off the VOD now and instead go... Go over to Wattpad and read it yourself. Because I've got up to, um, up to chapter 2 up there. And I'm currently working on chapter 3, which I hope to have finished by end of this month. Odds are, if I keep up my current pace, it's probably going to be done in about a fortnight. Okay, let's go. Uh, this scene. Do I have the right ones enabled? I do. Yeah. Okie doke. Um, apologies if my voices are a little, uh, a little more lackluster than they are over on YouTube. Because I've done a few proofreading streams over there as well. Um, why am I so far in the corner? I'm supposed to be like this. I guess I was sitting further off to the side because normally I have my laptop in like the middle of my table. But I didn't bother today. I just left it to the side. <laughs> um, so yeah, normally I do like voices and stuff. But I, I kind of destroyed my throat. <laughs> Uh, earlier today, trying to learn uh, a song. Oops. <laughs> but I'll still do my best. Anyway, um, I'm currently on page 311. <laughs> and I'm still calling them chapters, even though they're like, they're, they're probably going to have to be published as like completely separate books. <laughs> if I want to publish them physically. <clears throat> Maybe that's a good idea. Kirito interjected before Tony could launch into his next attempt at convincing Yulia to not be so closed off. Huh? Tony mumbled, turning his attention to, to Kirito again. His reaction almost seemed to give the impression that he'd forgotten Kirito was even here. Hmm? Yulia hummed, her book lowering just enough for Kirito to be able to see her eyes. I mean, everyone has their own way of keeping their minds off, off of unpleasant things, you know? Some people are more social and like to talk to others. By the way, I'm go I've mentioned this in both of my proofreading streams, but since this is on Twitch and there's probably going to be different folks potentially watching this, uh, Kirito is supposed to be Japanese, but I don't feel confident giving him a Japanese accent without it sounding racist. So... I'm just not that good at voices, so instead I try to give him like a light American accent. Some people are more social and like to talk to others. Uh, other people just put all their focus into something they enjoy, and I think that's fine. Though he did his, though he did his best. <laughs> I've made a lot of dumb typos in the past, but that's that's got to be that's a doozy. What the hell is best? They're not, the, the keys aren't even that close to each other. Though he did his best to appear as if he was as as if he was speaking naturally, Kirito was actually choosing his words rather carefully. He didn't want to be too harsh on Yulia and upset her, but he don't. But he also didn't want to think. Want her to think that he was tiptoeing around her out of fear of upsetting her. It was a difficult balance to manage. Besides, someone does need to go through the books and see if there are any clues, like, Gen like Jennifer's done for the Archive. 
If Yuli is happy to do that, then I say let her. She'll let us know if she finds anything. Tony raised... Tony raised an eyebrow, apparently not having been expecting the opposition from... Apparently not having... Ex having been... Why did I type it out like that? Expected. Been expecting, jeez. Apparently not having expected the opposition from... I'm gonna get rid of that the as well. Apparently not having expected opposition from the guy he brought for moral support. Despite that, he didn't actively try to shut down Kirito's argument. Instead, trying to play... Instead, trying to play into it. Well then, maybe I could help out. I may not exactly get the appeal of all this fictional stuff, but there's bound to be some non-fiction in all this. And hey, maybe maybe you can teach me a thing or two about why fiction's so important while I'm here. Oh, Yulia's gonna be hell on my throat. She's supposed to be very high-pitched. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yulia repeated, hiding her, hiding her face behind her book again. I j just work better alone. Work better alone. Getting her stuttering right when I try to voice her is difficult. Oh, come on. You'll, ba you'll barely notice I'm here. Now it was Kirito's turn to raise an eyebrow. With how insistent he was being about helping Yulia open up more, he had no doubt... He had no doubt the latest statement would turn out... Ah, uh, yeah. He had no doubt that... Oh, uh, because I tried to uh, avoid a double that. He had no doubt that that his latest statement would turn out to be an absolute liar if Yulia actually agreed to let him stay. I mean, you never know until you try, right? Um, actually, Kirito said awkwardly, not exactly taking joy in shutting down Tony's suggestion so quickly. You're not the first person... <laughs> That's not Tony, that's Kirito. You're not the first person to help... Off. What am I doing? <laughs> I go I go through these and I see these typos and I'm like, how the hell did I... How the hell did I do that? And how the hell did I miss that? My brain's like two steps ahead of my hands sometimes and so I just... I found things where I've started a sentence and then I just never actually ended it and I have no idea what I was trying to say. You're not the first person to offer help. Offer to help Yulia. Nomi's tried her, tried to help her before, or as well. Yulia nodded, just barely visible behind her book. It's, it's, it's. You can't stutter on a H, or an H. Sorry. It's hard to keep track. Of. So let me readjust where all the stutters are. It's hard to keep track of, of where she's, she's still in nervous mode, so it's fine if she stutters a bit more than usual. It's hard to keep track of where I'm up. Let's give it in this one. Where I'm up to if someone's picking one out of the middle. How come? You can't just leave out the ones you you're done with? Tony asked, clearly not understanding the way Yulia handled things. If I leave them out, they could get damaged, and they'll be out of order. So it'll, it'll be hard to find them again. Why would you want to find them again? If, why, why would you want to find them again if you've already gone through them? Yulia was silent, but Kirito was fairly certain that Tony was getting glared at from behind Yulia's book. Uh, Tony, maybe it'd be better to just let Yulia handle it the way she wants to handle it. Kirito interjected before Tony could say anything else that would put Yulia in his, put him in Yulia's bad books. His lack of, his lack of appreciation, that big ah.
How the hell did I decide to become a streamer when I'm so bad at talking? Um, interjected before Tony could say anything else that would put him in Yulia's bad books. His lack of appreciation for fiction really wasn't doing him any favours when chatting with an easily upset author. I mean, no one tries to interfere... I mean, no one tries to interfere with the Armory stock take or Jennifer's investigation in the Archive, right? It's probably best that we just leave it f to whoever's taking charge. I don't know why it's still giving me a red underline, but I can tell I was I should have had an apostrophe there, there an apostrophe there because it's short for whoever is. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Tony replied with a small, with a small sigh. Even his usual optimism wasn't enough to wasn't enough to. Pa ah, why is my nose being weird? Even his usual optimism wasn't enough to power through this one. Although Kirito supposed that shouldn't have been a surprise, considering Tony's optimism apparently didn't extend to himself and his own actions. He probably saw himself as a failure for not being able to convince Yulia to open up more. That was probably something he'd have to have a word with Tony about. Perhaps to convince him that it was highly likely that no one would be able to convince Yulia to rejoin the group while there were still books for her to go through. But that was obviously some... Holy shit, how long is this sentence? I feel like I should cut that up in the middle. It was probably to perhaps to convince him. Of course... Of course, that was obviously something that would, ha that would need to wait until they left. He didn't exactly want to upset Yulia by making her feel like she was a bother or something. Just consider it, please. I, I know you'll... I know you like all of this fictional stuff, but the real world's still... The real world's still here. We're all still here. It just wouldn't sit right to me if you were... Well, here without really being here. If that makes sense. Hmm. Yulia hummed, offering another small nod from behind her book, apparently fully comprehending Tony's confusingly worded statement. Is it really that confusingly worded? Why did I say it like that? Okay. Guess we'll go with it. I don't know why the word processor I use does this. You see, the, the line gets squished. Well, I guess that's everything I wanted to say, really. We should probably we should probably let you get back to it, back to it then. As Tony turned to leave, Kirito spoke up, deciding he could he couldn't just leave Yulia in this state. They'd gotten her all worked up. The least they could do was calm her down a little before they left. Out of curiosity, how much did, how much of the library have you gone have you gone through so far? That was already enough to get Yulia to lower her book a little. I was I was thinking it was a little more, but no. It stops it just a little. I barely remember the stuff I've even written, even though I wrote it myself. That, that was already enough to get Yulia to lower her book a little. Even if it was just so that Kirito could see the confused expression she was wearing. The sudden change in topic had undoubtedly caught her off guard. The book. What am I... Oh, of the books. Of the books. That's what I meant to say. Uh, the sun's changing. Uh, um, I th think maybe about a quarter of the books. Or maybe a fifth. Taking a look over at where the cleared out bookshelf sat amongst the rest of the library's contents. 
Hirito figured that Yulia's estimate seemed about right, assuming she started from the wall cl start assuming she started from the wall the cleared shelf was closest to. A quarter already? Tony asked incredulously, having turned back to the booth when Kirito asked his question. I think when Kirito had our uh, had asked. I think that sounds a little better. Kirito had asked this question. The library the library's only been open for what, three days? Three and a half? And you've already gone through so much. And Tony's accent is supposed to be a very strong, exaggerated Australian accent, and I don't have a strong accent. At least I don't think so. It's not as strong as some people. So I try to exaggerate, but I feel like today it's not coming across as Australian. Uh, Yulia silently nodded. Behind her book, lowering it again, just enough for her nose to be visible. Since Yulia wasn't replying, Kirito decided to fill the gap. Technically, she's only been going it for going through it for about. Technically, she's only been going for about two days. She had to cook one night, and she lost a morning of from oversleeping. Yulia blushed a little at the mention of her oversleeping, but otherwise simply nodded again, approving of Kirito's assessment. Jeez, I'm really an idiot for thinking I could help, man. There's no way I'd ever, I'd ever compare to that. Tony began to laugh at himself. No one else did. It did, however, manage to get Yulia to lower her book away from her face. She was clearly still anxious after everything that had just happened, considering she was... Uh, considering... She was holding the book... close to her chest. But she was clearly calmer than she was a moment ago. A few moments ago. Deciding to continue this for, for a little longer, at least until she wasn't clutching a book like her life depended on it, Kirito, Kirito decided to ask another question. Oh, related to... I, I, my brain is fried right now. Kirito decided to ask another question related to her investigation. Hey, have all the have all the books you've gone through so, so far been fantasy stories? Hmm? N no. Yulia replied with a shake of her head. Why do you ask? I'm not doing a voice right, but it's the best I can do right now. Oh, I just sort of noticed. I just sort of noticed that the books that both of. I just sort of noticed that both the books Naomi told you told me you recommended her were fantasy stories. I thought it might have something to do with what you were currently going through. Tony seemed a little lost, but thankfully he decided against interjecting. Oh, well, I have gone through the fantasy section, but I've gone through others too. This one, f this one, for example, is more of a modern-day romance novel. Yeah, she held up the book she'd been trying to read so that Kirito could see, before lowering it, lowering it again, this time allowing it to rest on the table instead of clutching it to her chest, though her grip still seemed a little tight. It's just that, from what Naomi told me of her, faith, of her favorite manga and anime, she, she tends to prefer fantasy stories or stories about or stories with superheroes superheroes tend to be more superheroes tend to be more common in comics than actual novels so I've just been recommending her fantasy novels based on the kinds of manga she told me about eh. Uh, uh, that makes sense. Kirito replied with a nod. I had asked you for a recommendation too, but 
Honestly, I really don't know the kind of stuff I'd be into. That statement was mainly just to make Yulia feel a little better, though Kirito hoped she didn't catch on to that fact. With the group still in disarray, he could... How do I keep... Typoing couldn't as could. He couldn't really imagine himself sitting down to immerse himself in a book when he could be doing something more beneficial to the group. Thankfully, it didn't seem as if Yulia had caught on to his intentions, as she simply let out a small chuckle, a rarity coming from her. With that, Kirito considered that a mission success. Considered, considered his mission a success. Well, well, we shouldn't hold. Well, we shouldn't hold you up for too long, right, Tony? You've still got the hold. You've still got most of the library to go through, after all. Uh, right, Tony said awkwardly, looking very distracted by something. We'll leave you to it. Thanks, Yulia mumbled, looking looking away awkwardly. Admittedly, Kirito did feel a little guilty about behaving so friendly with her when when she made her her intentions clear regarding making friends in the facility. But it calmed her down, so he was willing to step over those boundaries a little. With their parting words said, Kirito stood up from the re- I am unmuted, right? I haven't gone through this whole stream muted? No. Good. That would have been very awkward. Uh, blah, blah. Where were we? Um, right. We'll leave you. Thanks. Admittedly, uh... But it had calmed her down, so he was willing to step over those boundaries a little. With their parting words said, Kirito stood up from the reading booth, and he and Tony headed for the door, leaving Yulia to continue her reading. The moment they were far enough from Yulia, Tony began to whisper, ignoring, or perhaps not realizing, the fact that their footsteps were the only other sounds in the library, and Yulia could probably still hear them. I'm gonna put a comma there. How did you do that? He asked. Do what? Kirito asked in return, speaking in a similarly hushed tone, but not quite a whisper, seeing no reason to hide what he was saying. You got Yulia. You got Yulia to start speaking to you and just calmed her down in an instant. I thought you said you were bad. I thought you said you were bad at speaking to people. Kirito paused for a moment, thinking about what exactly he'd done to calm Yulia after the anxiousness he and Tony had built up within her. The answer was surprisingly simple, and one that strangely managed to fall in line with Kirito's early, earlier perception of himself and his abilities to speak to people. It's a, lot easy to, it's a lot easier to get people to talk to you if you talk about what they want to talk about, not what you want to talk about. Tony stared at him, an incredulous look on his face. That's seriously it? Kirito could only chuckle to himself as the pair finally left the library. Kirito's, Kirito opting to close the door behind himself so that anything happening in the yard wouldn't disturb Yulia's reading. With their little mission complete, or at least as complete as they could possibly get right now, it seemed that this would be where Kirito and Tony would part ways for now. Gonna get rid of that for now because it's a bit awkward right now, for now, in the same sentence. But instead of saying his goodbyes, Kirito had one last question he wanted to ask. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, is there any reason in particular why you care about helping care so much about help why you care so much about helping Yulia? He asked, his back still to the yard after closing the door. I know, I know you said it was just to help her because she's your friend, and you wanted to, and you wanted to help out, but I've only seen you wanting to help her. Tony's eyes were one, Tony's eyes were on the sky again, but Kirito could at least see his brow far at the question he'd been, re he'd received. Well, I mean, that's. <laughs> I can't scream. 
especially not in that voice. Their ensuing conversation was immediately forgotten as Kirito and Tony both immediately whipped around, turning to face the direction they'd heard the scream coming from. That was... Miles? Kirito said aloud to himself, trying to make sense of what they'd just heard. No sooner had he said those words than a liar than a loud No sooner had he said those words than a loud chime echoed through the facility. Not e not the high pitched chime signalling the start and end of a day. Not the not the calm chime calling them to the living room, but a deep, sinister chime that alerted them that the worst had just taken place. Feeling a buzzing in his pocket, Kirito reached for his PDA, vaguely aware that Tony was doing the same thing. As expected, there was a video waiting for him, once again depicting C and her room filled with monitors. Only this time her drink of choice seemed to be a, a glass of champagne. Oh frick, what does C sound like? It's been... It's been so long since I tried to voice all the characters that... She hasn't even shown up in any of them. Well, since she's named after me, maybe I'll just give her my voice. Attention all contestants, she said, giving the same rehearsed speech she had given every time. Every time this had occurred. Please gather in the auditorium. In the... Please gather in the auditorium. The game is afoot. She flashed a grin in the last second before the video ended, but by this point, Kirito had grown too desensitized to it to even worry. He was more concerned with what this all meant. Another member of the group was dead. The auditorium, Tony said, already stuffing his PD PDA back in his pocket. That's where Miles. That's where Miles' scream came from. Let's go, Kirito stated bluntly as he put a, put his own PDA away as well. Only receiving a small nod of acknowledgement, the the two raced across the yard to the auditorium, finding the door to be half open. Miles, Kirito asked as he entered, finding the source of the scream to be sitting on the floor near the entrance, a terrified look in his eyes. Miles, what happened? It's... it's... Miles mumbled, unable to form a full sentence. I wanna... I wanna do this part slowly. It's the big reveal. Thankfully, or perhaps unfortunately, it wasn't too difficult to find what exactly had put him in such a state. Following his line of sight, Kirito, saw, Kirito and Tony saw the horrible display that awaited them at the far end of the room. The room seemed mostly undisturbed, but perhaps that was just due to the fact that the instruments had been rather disorganized in the first place. What drew Kirito's eyes, though, was what was on the stage. Oh, was what was on the stage. Placing my emphasis in real weird places. Standing back against the curtain, arms splayed, arms splayed out as if he were crucified, was Marcus, blood still pouring from a hole in his chest. Kirito would have almost believed he was somehow still alive with that wound, given the way he was standing, but the way his head was slumped over, the way he wasn't moving a single muscle, making a sound, making a single sound, it all spelled one incontrovertible fact. Marcus was dead, and someone, someone killed him. <laughs> there we go, there's the death of the chapter. It's Marcus, the pastry chef, I need water. What page are we on? We've got through four pages. Kirito said, n oh, there, we're actually up here. He... he was... Miles mumbled, unable to get the words out. It was no surprise, given he was undoubtedly the... Moment? How'd I... 
the member of the group he was, who was closest with Marcus. If anyone was going to be hurting from this loss, it was going to be him. It's alright, you don't have to say it, Tony said, doing his best to be reassuring even though it was clear he was uncomfortable as well. Kirito said nothing further, not even as the other members of the group entered the room. He was too focused on the scene up on the stage. Up on stage. It was one thing to kill someone and try to escape the facility within the rules of C's game, but it was another entirely to violate their corpse like this. Alec and Eve had both sim simply been left where they were killed, splayed out against a counter or face down face down in the pool. Why did What did Marcus do to deserve having his body stood up like this, arms outstretched like some sort of martyr? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> what was it? What about this was necessary for escaping? It should make no difference to the investigation how the body was positioned, as they could easily just reposition it during the investigation if they needed. make it clear on clearer who I'm talking about as the group could easily just if they need it there we go was it just to try and th throw the group off their game distracting them with this gruesome display so that so that they wouldn't be able to focus on the investigation Kirito could think of no other reason but the idea that someone would use the body for something like this sickened him Though he also found himself slightly sickened by the fact that he was already thinking of Marcus as the body. It was only when Naomi entered the room, one of the final ones to arrive, that Kirito was finally stirred from his thoughts. Kirito? She said, catching his attention. Her face was mirroring the same expression of, of, his concer of concern that he was sure was on his own. It's happened again, Kirito stated bluntly with a sigh, unsure of what else to say. This was their third time encountering a body in the facility, not counting the victims of C's executions. And while, and while Kirito was certain he'd never actually be used to it, the only words he could think to describe what should have been an incredibly tragic event were just that, were just that. it happened again. Three murders in less than two weeks was was starting to desensitize him. It almost scared him more than the murders themselves. Almost. Sorry, my nose is being weird. Why? Naomi mumbled as she looked over at the scene of the crime. Clearly asking rhetorically. The motive wasn't even strong this time. Why would someone kill for it? It was at that point that they... That the moment they'd all been expecting finally arrived. And that just goes to show you can't judge, judge how someone will react based on your own values. Came the voice of their host. From the right of the stage, C, C walked out from behind the curtain. holding her arms out in what was probably supposed to be a display of showmanship, although Kirito could only see it as mocking the position Marcus's corpse was in. What's that, e what's that even supposed to mean? Clove shouted from across the room, his temper tantrums actually being directed at a worthwhile target for once. It means you can't just assume someone won't do something just because you wouldn't. You all thought this was a terrible motive, right? Didn't you think it was sh didn't you think it was shit too? Roxy asked offhandedly. C continued uh, her speech as if Roxy hadn't even said anything. Well, clearly someone amongst you had very different values. Values that made them decide this motive was worth killing for. And thank God they did. Constant arguments can only keep me entertained for so long without li without a little bloodshed. I mean, with how much you lot keep bickering, you'd think we were all hormonal teens. You'd think you're all hormonal teens or something. The joke is that most of the group are teenagers. 
Hurry up and get to the point. I can't do Noel's voice well. Apologies. Noel, Noel practically spat at C, glaring daggers from across the room. At least when C was here, Noel was given something to direct his anger at, instead of just silently brooding like he'd been doing for the past few days. Are you gonna make us play your stupid game or what? Or not? I would if you'd come a little closer. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I, I read that wrong. I would if you'd come a little closer. <laughs> C shouted back, creating a makeshift megaphone with her hands. What are you all doing standing at the entrance for? It's a dead body. It's not like it's gonna bite you or something. We don't have zombies here. Oh. C looked to the side for a moment, a finger on her chin, before turning back to the group again. No, we don't have zombies here. Confusing statements regarding the undead aside, Kirito knew they had to get up, get this over with sooner or later. Whether they want, whether they wanted to or not, C would force them to play her game, to go through the debate and and attempt to find the culprit. It was unavoidable, unless they wanted to forfeit their unless they wanted to forfeit their lives for failing to obey the host. And so, he stepped forward, approaching the stage, ready to face this challenge head on. Naomi walked alongside, walked, walked along, along beside, walked alongside him, displaying the same bold confidence, or perhaps the same facade that he was. The rest were not far behind. No one really wanted to go through with this. Even though they knew there was a killer in their midst, no one wanted to go through the tiresome process of debating who it was. And yet, they all knew there was no other way to progress. To progress. They're the same word, but you pronounce it different. <laughs> good, good. See, cooed. Irritating just about everyone present. Now, I think you all know the deal by now. Our dear pastry chef is dead, someone killed him, and it's your job to figure out why. It's not It's not their job to figure out why, it's their job to figure out who. Damas. It's your job to figure out who. As per usual, I have a gift to start you on her way. Or on your way. C raised her arm up, and everyone got ready to catch what she was throwing. The autopsy report. <laughs> With a flick of C's wrist, clipboards too large to have been hiding in her sleeve came flying out of nowhere, reaching each member of the group without anyone dropping theirs this time. Strangely though, unlike the last two times this had happened, C still had a clipboard in her hand, and she seemed just as confused as the rest of the group. Hold on, she mumbled before pointing at each member of the group, counting, counting under her breath. All was made clear when she let out a sigh, and her expression her expression shifted to one of annoyance. Okay, someone's not here. What? Kirito mumbled to himself before glancing around the group that had gathered before glancing around the group that had gathered in front of the stage. He had been so focused on the way that Marcus's body had been set up that he hadn't even bothered to check if everyone was here yet. He just assumed everyone was present because C had shown up. Hey! Clove breaks me. <laughs> hey, she's right, Jennifer's not here. Clove called out. Kirito almost didn't want to believe it, but looking around at everyone, he couldn't spot the not quite leader of the group who'd been speaking who he'd been speaking to just last night. Just last night. Uh he could feel his blood starting to run cold, having learned nothing from Tony's optimism. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, she doesn't say jeez. I keep doing that. Roxy has a specific way of speaking. She says God, not jeez. It's supposed to be like, God. God, God, you'd, you'd think she of all people would make it here in time. Roxy added, for some reason sounding more annoyed than worried. Granted, Kirito wasn't expe exactly expecting her to be concerned for Jennifer's safety, 
or anyone besides her own for that matter, but it seemed odd that she'd be annoyed by it. You... you don't think... Naomi mumbled, anxiously glancing around, hoping someone could confirm her whereabouts. Oh, that's just perfect, C grumbled, waving the final clipboard around as she gestured wildly. Something interesting finally happens, and one of the few of you who actually makes the debates fun to watch doesn't bother to show up. That's it. I can't be fucked looking for her. You all... You all go have a look around for... You all go have a look around. Give me a shout when you find her. I'll see you then. Having decided that was apparently good enough for, to be her closing words for now, C disappeared in a flash of light, not bothering to make any sort of fancy exit this time. All right, let's go, Kirito stated, taking charge as best he could. He didn't want to assume the worst, but regardless of the reality, he needed to find Jennifer as soon as possible. Hold on, Ace stated. Ace interrupted, raising a hand. There were a few confused murmurs around the group, but Ace was quick to shut them down. Someone should stay to guard the crime scene. I do not wish to assume the worst of anyone, but if we, but if we were all to, all to run off in search of Jennifer, someone could easily slip back into the auditorium and tamper with the evidence. You volunteering? Noel asked, apparently just as eager to go and find Jennifer as the rest of the group was. I wouldn't have brought it up if I wasn't. I'll stay back too, then, Sybil stated, also raising her hand. Not that I don't trust you or anything, but if you, do, but if you did decide to pull something, I'm pretty sure I'm just about the only one who could stand a chance of stopping you. Ace acknowledged her assessment with a nod. I'd, um, like to stay behind too, Marcus said, keeping his head down. To, um, to say goodbye and all that, you know. I am still alive, right? Yes. Yes. Kirito gave a small nod. Miles probably wasn't in a, in a state to really do any serious investigation anyway. Alright, everyone else, let's go. Who died and left you in charge? Who died and left you in charge? Roxy quipped before Kirito could run off, earning glares from just about everyone present. Uh... You best get moving before I lay hands on you again, Noel stated, standing awfully close behind Roxy as if to force her towards the door without actually touching her. Kirito had a feeling he probably wouldn't actually act upon that threat, considering what happened last time he touched Roxy, but he appreciated the effort regardless. It was significantly better than simply sitting by and watching Roxy make an everyone, make an enemy out, make an enemy of everyone in the group like she, like he usually did. Heh, <laughs> I'd like to see you try, Roxy replied, looking awfully smug considering she was standing in the same room as a dead body. Regardless, that was all she had to say as she joined the rest of the group, leaving the as she joined the rest of the group, leaving the auditorium and dispersing. The moment that he stepped outside, Kirito already knew where he was headed, and it seemed he wasn't the only one. Game room? Naomi asked, sitting by his side while the rest of the group went off in different directions. Game room, Kirito confirmed, already on his way over. The last he'd seen of Jennifer, she was leaving the library. Presumably to head, to head to a foosball match with Miles. In that case, the only place that made sense for her to be was the game room. The others, at, at least those in the library with him, hadn't seen her leave. But right now, his mind was racing. He didn't have time. He didn't have to. My nose being dumb again. He didn't have the time nor the forethought to tell to tell them she wasn't in the archive anymore. He was too focused on finding her, his blood already running cold and it, as his mind raced with the possibilities. Naomi simply approached and followed along, clearly having the same idea. She probably had a foos she probably had the foosball match on her mind, having been looking forward to watching it, and assumed Jennifer must have headed over there. 
Regardless of her reasons, the pair raced across the yard, over to the door of the game room. Regardless of her reasons, the pair raced across the yard and over to the game room, where ki game room door, which Kirito quickly flung open. Immediately, the soundproof barrier of the door was broken, and Kirito found his eardrums blasted, blasted with some sort of retro music. What the heck? He shouted, recoiling away from the door for a moment, unprepared for any kind of noise, let alone one so loud. He was, on he was only deterred for a moment, however, as the fact that there was noise coming from inside gave the distinct impression that someone must have been inside. There was noise coming from inside gave the distinct impression that there must have been someone in there. And even if there wasn't, someone had to stop that racket. Stepping inside, his attention was immediately drawn to the TV sitting at, sitting at the left end of the room. It seemed to be displaying an old 8-bit game, presumably in demo mode from being left alone for too long, as it seemed to be playing itself. Awkwardly stepping around the foosball table, Kirito quickly switched the TV off, silencing the noise. Uh, silencing the noise once more, once and for all, allowing him to breathe a sigh of relief as his eardrums enjoyed their brief respite. Jeez, what the hell? What the hell was that about? <laughs> I can't scream. I still live with my brother. I don't want him, him to hear me screaming. Once he moves out, I'll try screaming. <laughs> Kirito immediately turned around, facing the other end of the room, as a sickening pit formed in his stomach. Naomi had followed him inside, and the door was half the was about half the way closed, revealing what was at the other end of the room. Hanging from the cabinet, hanging from the cabinet that can from the cabinet that had housed the games, wrists bound and arms outstretched, blood still flowing from a hole in her chest, was Jennifer. Or to be more accurate, Jennifer's body, the second body Kirito had seen today. It's a double murder because it's chapter 3 and I'm ripping off Danganronpa. <laughs> I already spoiled that Jennifer was going to die <laughs> during my previous proofreading stream over on YouTube. But uh, here it is. She's dead. He didn't even wait for, for the chime this time. It played by the time he had his PDA in, in hand. He didn't know if Naomi had thought to grab hers. Uh, he didn't know if Naomi had thought to grab hers. He simply didn't bother looking. The two of them probably didn't need to see C's message anyway, but he wanted to be sure this wasn't some kind of mistake, some sort of trick his mind was playing on him. He watched as it vibrated, and a new video appeared on screen. As before, C was in the monitor room, bathed in red light. But things were a little different this time. Her glass was empty, but she was already in the process of filling it up, her other hand emptying the contents of a champagne bottle into it. Were the situation less dire, Kirito might have seen the, seen the humour in C being unprepared for another body discovery announcement so soon, but given what was in front of him, there was no way he could possibly find humour in all of this. Attention all contestants, C stated, her eyes on the last few drops of champagne coming out of the bottle instead of the camera. Instead of... Focusing on the camera sounding significantly less composed than last time. Please gather in the game room. The game is afoot. Instead of immediately ending the video, C, C raised her now full glass to the camera. Again. Uh, as if to call a toast. Again. <laughs> Insta instead of a grin, the final shot of the video this time was her sculling her glass of champagne. Kirito could only sigh. There wasn't any point in getting mad. 
mad at her making light of a situation like this. She was totally in control, and there was nothing any of them could do to get back at her for making them suffer like this. It didn't take long for the rest of the group to arrive. What happened? Tony asked as he stepped inside, Yulia hot on his heels. Did you find Jennifer? She's... um... Naomi mumbled, not entirely sure what to say. She simply gestured with her head towards the end of the room, now being blocked by the door. I... I see. Tony said, apparently not having the guts to look just... Guts to look just yet, as he walked inside. Let me change... Said as he walked inside, apparently not having the guts to look just yet. Yulia had a similar reaction, though chose not to say anything. The rest of the group followed in suit. Is that how... Is that how you use that phrase? Let me Google. Google is my friend. Followed in suit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the group followed in suit, though some chose to take a peek behind the door. For his part, Kirito really couldn't do anything besides staying there, crouched on the floor, staring at what little of Jennifer's body he could see behind the door, behind the open door. Why? Why did this have to happen? They'd already lost one person today. Why did they need to lose another so soon? And why Jennifer? She'd become one of the people he trusted the most within the facility. They'd openly called each other friends. Even if she'd stepped away from the position of leader, she was constantly a guiding force, not just for Kirito, but for the group as a whole. Why did she have, have to be taken away from them like this? How are they supposed to get through this upcoming debate without her guidance to keep them on track? Once again, the group was greeted by a voice that no one wanted to hear. A voice no one wanted to hear. All right, all right, everyone's here. Let's get this show on the road. Time's a wasting. C declared, speaking significantly faster than normal. She stepped out from behind the door and hopped up onto one of the chairs in the room once again feeling the need to make sure she was higher than everyone else. Hey, you could have... Hey, you could have at least wait until I'm inside. I, I can't do Roxy's voice when she's angry. What the fuck's even going on? We already found the fucking body. Uh, Roxy's fat being the last one to enter alongside Noel. The moment Roxy was out of the way of the door, C kicked the door closed, revealing Jennifer, Jennifer's body to everyone, eliciting a variety of reactions that C clearly had no time for. Alright, who is the funny man who thought it'd be a good idea to leave two bodies lying around? She paused for, she paused for just a second before raising a finger and continuing. That was a rhetorical question, don't answer it. Isn't this what you wanted? Noel asked, glaring at C with his arms crossed. I wanted an exciting killing game. This technically does make things more interesting, but it also kind of defeats the whole point of the debate and all the investigation and... Oh, but it also kind of defeats the, the whole point of the debate and all the investigation and everything. If one person just kills everyone, then the game's over and they didn't... and they didn't have to outsmart anyone. If you cared so much, why didn't you put it in the rules? Sybil asked, looking incredibly unamused. C paused for... C paused for a moment, staring at Sybil with an undecipherable exp expression on her face, before giving a small shrug. Like I said, it makes things more interesting. I just didn't really think any of you would actually have the guts to do it. For the sake of future-proofing the game, though, I think I'm... I think I'm going to have to add a little something to the rules. After a body is discovered, violence is strictly prohibited until the conclusion of the debate. Effective immediately. 
Um, he was saying... Yulia mumbled, clearly doing her best to speak up, but struggling to raise her voice above a low speaking level. It was enough to catch everyone's attention, though, and enough for Kirito to take no notice of the nervous glance that she was sending his way. Uh, was Jennifer killed? Hold on. It's not important, but it bothers me. Was Jennifer killed after we found Marcus? C stared at Yulia incredul incredulously before shrugging again. Well... Well, I'm not just... Well, I'm not just gonna go ahead and tell you that, am I? Figure it out yourself, that's what the investigation is for. You, uh... You do realize that rule doesn't actually stop what you said from happening, right? Tony asked, sounding more than a little nervous. Someone could still kill everyone as long as no one found the bodies. Technically, yes, C said, interrupting Tony before he could offer any further advice. But do you really think anyone here is smart enough to be able to kill everyone without anyone discovering any of the bodies? The group fell silent for a moment. Before Miles, probably the least expected, probably the most expected member of the group, spoke up. I mean, she does kind of have a point. Before anyone could make any quip, that before anyone could make any quips, adjusting the way I'm sitting. Sorry if I'm awkwardly moving back. Uh, before anyone can make any quips regarding the group's relative intelligence. Let me just check. I'm, I I don't think anyone's shown up. No. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Just in case. Just in case my chat wasn't working properly. Uh, where was I? Ah, right, right at the start, of course. Before anyone could make any quips back regarding the group's relative intelligence, C spoke up again. Alright, we've wasted enough time already with two rounds of back and forth. Think fast! Not, not giving anyone time to react this time, C flicked her wrist, sending a flurry of clip clipboards flying through the, throughout the small room. A fair few were dropped this time. The autopsy report! Now if you'll excuse me, I need to figure out how I'm supposed to decorate the chamber for something like this. Wait. Wait. Sybil suddenly called out, extending a hand in C's direction. What? I'm on a tight schedule here. Can I wait until the debate? C asked in, a, in return, confusing everyone with her assertion. Why exactly was she on a tight schedule? Did she have a time limit to deal with or something? Was this related to whoever she was showing the game, killing game to on the outside? On the outside? Or was this just another part of her showmanship? No, it can't. It's important for the investigation. Sybil replied, lowering her arm now that she had C's attention. We have two victims this time, which means it's also possible that we have two culprits. If Marcus and Jennifer were killed by two different people, which one... Which one do we have to find during the debate? Do we have to find both culprits? Ah. C pursed her lips, awkwardly looking around at the group in front of her. If Kirito didn't know any better, he would have believed that C hadn't actually pre prepared for that possibility. But at this point, he assumed she was just pre pretending for the sake of a good performance. Hmm. You know what? Don't worry about it. What the fuck kind of a response is that? Roxy spat. The sentiment was echoed by the rest of the group, albeit with significantly less swearing. Yeah, I'll leave it as that. I was thinking about switching swearing out for profanity, but I think it works fine. Look, just investigate. Look, just investigate both murders, and then at the debate, discuss both murders. If you're smart enough to figure it out, then I'm sure it'll all work out fine in the end. Got it? Good. I'm out. Have fun. Not leaving any further room for comment, C snapped her fingers and vanished in a flash of light. 
leaving the rest of the group to figure out what to do from here. Silver was the first to has to speak up again as she pushed her way through the crowd and over to the door. I'm going back to gar I'm going back to guarding Marx's crime scene. I'll investigate while I'm there. I'm counting on the rest of you to investigate elsewhere. Ace Ace nodded as he stepped up next to her. Likewise. I would also advise stationing someone to keep an eye on Jennifer's body as well. Though I leave it to you to sort out to sort that out amongst yourselves. I'll take care of it, Noel stated, raising a hand so that everyone could see him up the back of the room. While he would have appreciated appreciate it more under more favorable circumstances, Kirito could at least be a little glad that Noel was contributing to the group again when they needed him the most. You're not gonna, you're not gonna force me to stay here with you, are you? Roxy asked, shooting an unamused glare in Noel's direction. You got anything better to do? That statement upgraded Roxy's glare from unamused to annoyed. Thankfully, Tony was there to step in with... What the fuck was I trying to say there? Thankfully, Tony was there to step in... ...with the save? Yeah, I think, I think that's what it was. Step in with the save. Yeah, he, he's, he's got the save, you know? He's got it sorted. I mean, if we take out Ace and Sybil, you're probably the only person who could stand a chance at stopping Null if he tried to tamper with anything, he stated. He tried to say more, presumably, presumably something about how he didn't actually suspect Null of any wrongdoing, but by that point, Roxy was already talking over the top of him. And that's 10 pages, so that's where I'm going to stop the stream. Because I need to save my voice for tomorrow. Because <laughs> I've got another stream. So, uh, thank you anyone who watches the VOD for this. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to download it so I can put it up on YouTube as well. Um, I do have another stream scheduled for tomorrow morning at, uh, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Stand- uh, Australian- Australian Eastern Daylight Time, not Standard Time. We don't go back to Standard Time until next month. Um, and we're going to be playing Peggle Deluxe. I've never played it before, but, uh, once we end off the stream, I'm going to- <laughs> I'm going to try and, uh... What was I going to say again? Right, I'm going to try and, um... Uh, set things up so that it's ready for tomorrow. And I'm not doing things last minute like I did with freaking Planet Zoo. Because I, I wanted to... I wanted to stream Planet Zoo. But, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. The game didn't want to start up. Is anyone I'm following? The answer is no. The answer is no. No one I'm following is streaming right now. So we're not going to bother with uh, a raid. Well, we don't have it. What am I saying? There's no one in the chat. We can't do a raid. Dingle. Dingleberry. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you watch the VOD, thank you for watching. Apologies for the scuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys another time. Otsukame! Bye-bye! And scene.